Hello my quilting friends! My name is Leah Day and welcome back to the Dream Big Quilt Along. This week we're going to be finishing off all of those double petal shapes with a beautiful design. We're going to be stitching feathers using the feather ruler through that area. So let's jump on the machine and learn how to quilt feathers with rulers together. So here is the beautiful feather design we're going to be stitching together. And we're going to stitch this through that narrow channel in our double petal shapes. These are the petals that at the very, very beginning, we stitched just another unique petal inside of it. And then on week three, we stitched grid lines within as well. So I filled in half of this one. I'm going to complete the other half uh, a little bit later on. I want to show you first how to get started with the feather shapes. Uh, this is using the feather ruler and it's using it in a way it wasn't really designed to be used. When I designed it, I meant for it to only stitch feathers in a straight line like this. And it works really, really well for that. The marks on the ruler allow you to line up the feathers just exactly on top of one another to form that shape exactly. But in experimenting and playing with it, I found that yes, indeed, you can also use this ruler to form these feathers. Uh, and we're not gonna use it, you know, all of the lines that are etched on the ruler, but there are still some here that are very, very helpful. So let's pull up our thread and get started. And where I'm going to pull up my thread is out here. So we have the two inch channel. This is the grid lines area. And I wanna pull up thread closer to the outer edge of the petal shape. So I'm gonna come down here and about a quarter inch or so from that inner line of echo quilting. There we go. So I pulled up my thread tail up to the surface, tuck both of those underneath the foot. And these are a little bit long, so I'm gonna break them a little shorter than that. I always leave nice long thread tails so that way I can tie off and bury later. And you can find another video on how to do that. Link that up. All right, so I'm gonna get this in position and where the ruler goes for this very first line is pretty important. It kind of sets the stage for all the feather shapes. And so where I wanna put this ruler is hooking it around the foot, but I don't necessarily wanna put the foot all the way in that pocket. That would be how I do it if I'm getting started using just normal feathers in a straight line, but we're not doing that. Instead, I'm gonna pull the foot out of the pocket a little bit until the edge of the ruler is a quarter inch away from this, this dip, dip here, this like little loop. I'm making sure that that is about a quarter inch from my echo quilting on my pedal. So I hope that's not confusing. Basically, I, this is the way that it's designed to go, kind of hooking around the foot completely. It's like a little dip here in the ruler. That's the way it's designed to go. And then I'm just pulling that back until I'm a quarter inch. I have a quarter inch of space from the edge of the ruler to that line of echo quilting. That looks great. I'm gonna press firmly on the ruler as I stitch all the way around it. And I'm gonna be stitching around and down. And these are travel back feathers. So as soon as I get down to that uh, inner petal shape, I'm going to travel stitch here up the back of that feather. And you just use that ruler as a guide. And I'm going to stop about right there. So I'm estimating space here. This is all just visual estimation. I'm stopping so that where the foot is about, again, a quarter inch from that line of echo quilting. Now I bounce the ruler forward, and now I have a few other things that I can line up. I can again kind of tilt this around until the kind of loop here, this little dip is a quarter inch away from that line of stitching. I can also look back here on the back of the ruler, there is an etched line, and that etched line is basically representing the feather that you just stitched. That's what you usually line it up with. Now, if I line that up with the feather I just stitched, the back end of that line, I'm finding that I can't really line up both at once. So what I'm gonna do is stitch down just a bit, just a little bit more travel stitching. And I think that now I'll be able to line up both at the same time. That looks good. So you might have to tweak it just a little bit to get it in the right position. And then again, wash and repeat. You're gonna stitch down and around. I'm basically running right to that line of echo quilting that was around the inner petal. 
So that first line, then we echo quilted it, and then we filled that area with grid lines. I'm running my stitching line to that outer line right there that isn't built up with lots and lots of travel stitching. So that's what I'm stitching to. And I'm trying to put a lot of pressure here on the ruler so it doesn't slip as I use that as a guide to travel stitch back. That allows you to do really nice, beautiful, perfect travel stitching all the way up the back of that feather. And then now I can bounce it forward. So just like that. I'm gonna speed up just a little bit so that way you can see how fast this is gonna go. This is one of the fastest designs in this quilt along because we only have this little narrow two inch channel to fill. And it's so easy, these feathers, these are little two inch feathers. They fill it in so nicely. It's super easy. And as you can see, it's just bounce the feather ruler forward, get it in position, and then stitch around it. Now you might be wondering if you have a space that's longer than two inches and this is, you don't have enough room here to get all the way back and hit your line. Well, what you're gonna do in that case is you're just going to slide the ruler down further and keep stitching and just line it up that way. So if that happens to you, don't worry. Just keep shifting the ruler backward and it'll still give you that really nice angle. And then it'll also be a nice guide for your travel stitching as you stitch forward too. And remember what I was saying last week about things kind of feeling loosey-goosey a little bit? As you do more stitching on your quilt, and particularly if you're quilting on, let's say, a quarter, a uh, half inch or quarter inch scale, you know, there's gonna be softness. It's gonna feel a little softer in some areas and a little stiffer in others. And just watch out for that because that's just gonna allow the fabric to be a little shifty and wiggly on you. And I just kind of spread it out with my hands Get my hands nice and wide. Make sure that it's not going to be wiggling as I'm stitching. All right, so these, fed, these um, petals have a point to them. Most of them come to some sort of a point. And we have a couple different options of using that with our feather shapes. And so here's an example of one where I think I'm going to basically stitch my feathers straight up. And this feather more or less came into the tip of that petal shape, and I like that. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna travel stitch. You could also break thread, and I'm gonna go all the way back down to the opposite side. So I'm gonna fill in feathers that are curling in the opposite direction up this side of this petal. And there's actually many different ways that you could do this. The other way I'm gonna show you is basically taking the feathers and curling them and continuing to go in that direction, and you just make a few extra in this pointy area to turn that corner a little bit. Uh, and so I'll show you that method as well in just a minute. But I wanna show you this method. This one's kind of my favorite. I like it a lot because I think it's, you know, okay, it's kind of the more traditional way of stitching feathers. Uh, you would typically have the feathers curl one way and curl the other way and kind of have a little point at the end. Alrighty, so we've got this little bit of a weird area down here where this petal just extends just a little bit deep, that's okay. I'm still gonna stitch all the way out until I'm about a quarter inch from that line of echo quilting. There we go, that looks good. Now I'm gonna line up the opposite side of my feather ruler. And this is the thing, you have both angles of feathers. You have a side that is going to turn and do that side, that is kind of a, a left-handed feather. And then all you have to do is just turn it around and you have the opposite side, you have a right-handed feather too. All right, so this time I wanna show you how to get started if you, um, if you wanna get started actually right on that line of echo quilting. I'm gonna start right there and I'm just gonna line up this feather ruler so that it comes down just like that. I think that's gonna look really good. It's also gonna sort out this little weird area down in here. I think that's gonna look really good. So you actually set the stage. You can decide what angle you wanna go with if you want it to be more like this or more like this. The longer, you know, the way, if you tilt it like this, you see how that's gonna be a long line going all the way down there. That might be a little tricky to line up with your next feather shape, so just watch out for that. I think that looks like a really good angle. And as always with ruler quilting, you're always adding that quarter inch mentally and that quarter inch is what you're stitching because you've got a quarter inch on the foot, your needle's in the center position 
And so that's adding that. So even though the ruler looks like it was basically positioned right on top of a previous line of stitching, I'm gonna be quilting a quarter inch away from that. All right, so I'm stitching up, getting about a quarter inch or so from that line of echo quilting. Now I'm gonna reposition my ruler. And this time again, I'm looking at that little curving tip, making sure that's a quarter inch from that line of echo quilting. Back here, I can sort of line up some of my etch lines, but honestly, I think that looks good. I think it's gonna be a nice angle. Now, it is a little bit of a struggle to quilt this without the ruler shifting. So a few tips. I'm putting a lot of pressure down on my fingertips, down on the ruler, making sure it's not shifting. And what can also help too is just spread out your hands over the quilt so it's not going to move on you. And then another thing is this travel stitching, you don't have to use the ruler. If you're good at travel stitching, you can shift the ruler away and not worry about it as you travel stitch up the back of that feather. So understand if the ruler is starting to feel like it's slipping on you or you just don't like it, you can always just set that aside when you're doing the travel stitching. The ruler is a template that's guiding the shape, you know, as we make that initial shape. But if you have the skill built, you don't necessarily need it when you're stitching back up the back of that feather. There we go. Alrighty, so we're coming up. Just need to stitch a couple more. Get it in position again. Might we try a different angle too? Let's try a different angle. I haven't really played around with this too much. I kind of got set in one direction, kind of keeping the ruler to the back of the machine. And now I'm thinking maybe we need to try something different. Let's try it this way. Again, lining up. I'm just visually seeing the edge of that part of the ruler and that line of echo quilting and visually kind of estimating and saying, okay, there's a quarter inch between that. That looks pretty good. Oh, I actually, I like this angle a lot. That feels a lot more in control. I should have tried that before. So there we go, stitch back. It's just, it's a, I find it a little awkward to stitch side to side, but I do feel like at that angle, I'm able to hang onto the ruler better and it feels less slippy. So I like that. There we go, that looks good. And again, visually, I'm just looking at the edge of the foot and that line of echo quilting, and I'm just stopping right there. There's not really anything to go off of. Whenever you're using the ruler in the traditional way, uh, then you will have a guide, a stop, and you know where to stop with each feather. Uh, this is kind of using this ruler in a way it's not really designed to be used, but that's okay. That's the cool thing is that you can use rulers in many different ways. You don't have to use it the way that it was originally designed. You can play with it make it your own and figure out how to use it for exactly what you need it for. Okay, continue to stitch up here. And I think I'll branch off this way. And you might be wondering, okay, well, what happens if you stitch too far? Like, let's say I stitch, I got distracted and I kept stitching and I was right here. You know, kind of be difficult to line that up and make the feather properly. So instead, just simply stitch back down again. It's not a big deal. You can, you can travel stitch back down if you stitch too far up the back of a feather. No big deal. There we go. Quilt down and around. And now this is pretty typical of the Dream Big petals, and that is that they don't fit the feathers exactly perfectly. So this very last one is going to be slightly cut off. So we've got the feather that came in and kind of hit the tip of our double petal and we've got this shape that's coming in and I think that looks really nice. This secondary feather, it's almost gonna be like this feather is being overlapped by this one. So here's how this is gonna work. I'm gonna position the ruler. Again, just looking at that spacing, here's the curve. There's about a quarter inch between that curve and that echo quilting. I'm gonna stitch out and form that curve just like so. Okay, so that's established, that's done. Now I'm gonna travel stitch along the back of that other feather. Because remember, we're establishing, making it look like that feather is overlapping and on top of this partial feather. All right, so now I'm gonna reposition this ruler. This time I'm looking at the etch line back here. At the back, there's an angled line. I'm lining that up with the line I just stitched with the feathers before it. Lining that up, 
and I just stitch that little straight line and back up. Now you might be wondering, why did I bother to do that? Why, why stitch up and stitch back down again? Why is that even necessary? And if you take a look at it, let me stitch away just a bit so that way you can really see it. If I didn't do that little line of quilting, then this area would look weird. Now you might be wondering why I bothered to do that little bit of stitching. And I just personally think that that makes it look more consistent. It makes it look like that is a complete feather shape but it's being cut off by that feather. So the way to do this is to first stitch your feathers up one side, and then after you get to that tip of your double petal, then you're gonna start from the bottom and stitch your feathers up the other side. The reason why I do it that way is because I just like that motion of building from the bottom up. That's just unique to me. You could probably line up the ruler and figure out how to stitch basically from the top back down. That's something else to play with, quite honestly. With the ruler as a guide, you could definitely do it. Uh, I just know that I really like that method of coming up from the bottom and around and then wherever, whatever space I'm left with at the end, this is how I handle it. I stitch a partial feather, having that cut off by the one I've already stitched, and then I fill in any extra lines that are needed to make it look consistent. Now here's another method that you can use to curl around these double petal shapes. Instead of stitching from two different directions, you can just stitch in one direction all the way around. When you get to the tip, you're not going to break thread, you're going to keep on going. So in this situation, let's just pretend that I have quilted all the way up and around to this point, and now I'm just repositioning my ruler to continue curving around the tip of this petal shape. So here we go. I'm going to drop my needle down. And what I want to do, I'm going to try and rotate this around so you can really see. What I want to do is instead of uh, having this feather be kind of the tip of the petal, instead it's going to be a curve. So I'm going to take the feathers and curve them around so that they're angling in another direction. So this very first one, I've got to kind of eyeball it here. I want to make sure that the tip of the feather is, again, a quarter inch from that echo quilting. You can see it's going to be very short, and that's okay. That's exactly what you want, because you're turning the corner. That means that some of the feathers are going to be slightly smaller than the others. So here you can see a little bit better angle of that right here, how the feather, I have just angled that inward quite deeply. Let's see if I can get this in position and have, it's an awkward angle to have this ruler. I'll be completely honest with you. So I'm gonna hang on to it real good as I curl the quilt around it. Because with quilting on a haul machine, the tricky thing is that you're moving the quilt and the ruler together and both need to stay in contact with the foot. So just bear that in mind as you're forming these stitches and moving the ruler. If it feels like a struggle, rotate things around. I'll be honest, it just for some reason I got into a habit of always keeping it like this. And that just really, that feels better to me. I can see also a little bit better too. So here again, the angle of the ruler is just a little bit deeper. I'm gonna form more of a shorter, stubbier feather. But over here, I'm just making sure again that my I have space basically around that curve to form the tip of that feather shape. The reason why I'm always estimating a quarter inch here from the curve of the ruler to that line of echo quilting is so that when I stitch around it, I don't overlap that line of echo quilting as if the feather was kind of overlapping or coming out of the petal shape. I don't like that look, that looks messy to me. So that's why I'm always estimating that quarter inch. There we go. That looks good. And then stitching up the back of the feather shape. There we go. And now repositioning. So we're almost on track now. Almost back to, yep, this is basically back to more or less a normal feather shape. So the lines, when you'll know when it's nearly there, whenever the lines that are etched on the ruler to represent the feather shape from before that you've just stitched, that line is starting to line up nicely with the ruler. So there we go. And again, stitch around. When you feel comfortable and you know you feel like you can move fairly fast, then you wanna put your foot down 
be careful. I was, that's a little bit on the fast side for the speed that I was moving, but I was also noticing I was getting some big stitches, so I wanted those shrink stitches to shrink slightly. So that kind of multiple reasons why I'm putting my foot down just a little bit more than I was before. Okay, shifting around, making sure the quilt feels comfortable. And again, lining up that etch line on the ruler and looking back and making sure I've got that quarter inch between the ruler and that line of echo quilting. And I'd say if you wanna err on either side, uh, err on the side of leaving a little bit more space between the feather ruler and the outer petal shape because that's gonna ensure that the feather fits within this space rather than kind of bleeding outward into the outer areas of the petal. Okay, I'm gonna continue stitching a few more of these and then show you how to finish off the feather in this case. Okay, so I basically got this last feather, last whole feather that I can stitch. So I'm gonna stitch on down. And the next feather, we're gonna kind of pretend like that next feather is kind of being overlapped by these petals back here. And so I really think it only needs one line and that's just to come out just like that and butt right up against those other petal shapes. So let me stitch away and you can see what this looks like. So here you can see, I just angled the ruler, taking it from that angle that we had. That was very nice. I just made that just a little bit deeper for that feather. And then this last one, all I needed to make that look complete was to stitch that last little line off and that worked out just fine. So understand that you can curve your rulers around the tip of your double petal however you like. Whether you like to stitch up one side like this one, stitch up one side and then up the other side and have them kind of meet in the middle or have it curve all the way around consistently in one direction, it's totally up to you. Either way, it's gonna be absolutely fabulous to fill your double petal shapes with these pretty feathers. So now that we've learned how to create feathers with rulers, now let's learn how to quilt the feathers freehand. That's without the ruler. And this is gonna come in handy in our two smallest double petals. So I've got this one here. You can see I already filled it in. I've got my grid lines in the center and the feathers were just too small to use the feather ruler for because that channel is barely, I think barely an inch and a half wide. So these two smallest ones, you're just not gonna be able to use the ruler. So you need to be able to stitch these freehand. And it begins with just a simple feather shape to kind of set the stage. And then I'm going to just follow the same exact path that I did when I was quilting with rulers and that is to travel back, swing out and around, and then stitch back to that uh, line, that, that double petal line uh, that the grid lines is within, and then travel back again, coming out, swinging forward to that line of echo quilting, back and around. And if you find this really difficult, really challenging to be able to stitch this freehand, grab a marking pencil and mark it. A feather is basically a teardrop shape, kind of a bend over teardrop shape. So you can always just mark circles up the outer edge of your petal and that can be your guide. That works really, really well. And it's just a matter of stitching uh, the little angular lines that flow out from that. This is one of those things that just really needs a good bit of practice. So my best advice would be to maybe mark the petals onto plain fabric, maybe just, just mark a simple oval shape and then uh, create that narrow little channel exactly like how we're quilting it and then just practice stitching feather shapes into that. That really works out the best way. But as you can see, I just travel stitch up the back, swing out and around just so I skim right up against that line of echo quilting and then come back to that inner petal line travel stitch again. And I like this form of quilting feathers the best because the travel stitching is always in the same space. You're, it's basically a wash and repeat. There's lots of other different types of feathers that you can stitch. Uh, you can leave space between them if you don't like to do travel stitching. You can bounce forward and back. Uh, there's lots of different methods and you really just need to play with it and see what works best for you. 
This is a situation where I will even grab a marking pencil because I want to plan it out and make sure it's going to come out just exactly right. And that is quilting a feather so that it comes right out in the tip of that petal shape. This was hard to do with rulers because of course there's so much space estimating going on, but whenever you're quilting this freehand, you can make it happen and make sure that that, ruler, that feather is ending up exactly where you want it. So there we go. I kind of have a rough outline of that feather shape. And so I'm going to travel stitch down, slow and steady, and then I'll branch out and I'll kind of rub it right up against that petal, inner petal shape, that echo line, and then come back down and I'm going to hit that tip just exactly right. Okay, so yes, I still like to, <laughs> to stitch my feathers from the bottom up. So in this situation, again, I, well, I guess I should show you what it looks like whenever I try and stitch feathers backwards. It's not going to be pretty, just a warning. So let me give it a try. I'm gonna travel stitch up. And so basically we're trying to reverse the shape and still get the same nice angle. So I'm gonna swing out and around and I'm kind of angling that now this way. This is the problem is that, you know, it's kind of hard to see and it's also hard to get the exact same angle that you had before. So here I'm just travel stitching a bit just to make that look consistent. Now I'm gonna swing out, I'm gonna try this again. It very well may end up being the ugliest feather I've ever stitched, but you know, that's okay. I want you to see that even I struggle with this too. So you see how the angle of these feathers is kind of flowing nicely that way. And these are kind of ending up not quite so nice. <laughs> It's just not something I'm good at, stitching it at that angle. Uh, so let's see if I can set the stage just a little bit better for these. If I stitch down, I can make that weird one make sense by just stitching that kind of coming up and into it. I think that makes it look a little bit better maybe. There we go. And then I can stitch down and then swirl into this whole area. Yes, this is definitely getting into the realm of total freehand feathers, but you know, you gotta make it up the best way you can. But it just lets you know that there's just so many ways that you can make feathers. It's not just one method, one single way to stitch it. You can use the rulers, you can go freehand, and then the, within freehand feathers, there's just so many ways you can form the design. There we go. I think I finally got the angle down that I like. That looks so much better. Now I'll just fill in this last few feathers and have them actually look <laughs> somewhat the right way. That's a lot better. <laughs> and this is just the thing, you know, once you get kind of set in your ways and you, you have a favorite method, it's really easy to only do that one method and not push yourself to continue learning new ways of, of stitching it. And so this was one of those things that I'd just gotten into the habit of stitching feathers always in that one direction. And it's very clear that all I need is just a little bit of practice and I'll be able to master quilting feathers in the opposite direction too. So overall, it doesn't really matter which way you stitch it. Whether you stitch up the feathers on both sides, you stitch down if that works better for you, you quilt it with rulers or you don't quilt it with rulers. Just fill in all of these beautiful double petal shapes with feathers and your dream big quilt is going to look fantastic. So that's it for this video. I hope you're excited about giving this design a try. If you'd like to know exactly where I stitched this design on the Dream Big quilt, come and check out the Dream Big guidebook available at leahday.com slash dream guide. I share step-by-step -step diagrams for which designs I stitch in which areas on the quilt, as well as extra helpful tips and tricks for getting started and more instructions on what I'm doing with my Dream Big quilts. I'm gonna be cutting these up and turning them into a quilted jacket. So if you'd like extra information, some tips and tricks and behind the scenes information, come and check out that guidebook at leahday.com slash dreamguide. Until next time, let's go quilt.